my name is Martha Zink and I'm with Salian Consulting and this is the fifth video in the series Delve into FileMaker 12. Now we're still talking about interface but here we're going to focus on layout mode and we're going to talk about stencils and layout width. I'm going to jump over to this event details layout, jump into layout mode and the button that we're looking at is this button right here in the toolbar and next to the inspector and it's called show or hide screen and device dimensions and when I turn that on we're gonna get these orange boxes that show up on the layout and I'm gonna zoom out to make it a little easier to see and if I click on the little arrow on the on the button I can choose what dimensions I want to see so in this case I'm looking at 640 by 480 uh, I can choose multiple to see at once, so I'm going to choose the 1024 by 768. So you'll see we get the different uh, different sizes on the screen in orange. Be aware that these dimensions are true to their number, and what I mean by that is that it's it really is a, a line at 1024 and a line at 768. Um, that doesn't take into account how big the toolbar is, or the scroll bar, or the small tool toolbar at the bottom of the page. So really. While these are good guides, they really are just that. They aren't um, the end-all be-all. So if you're developing something for 1024 by 768, make sure to include a little extra space so that you have the, the room for the, the toolbar if you're showing it and the, you know, the scroll bar if you have something like a list view. So just some, some caution needs to be taken uh, there. Now you'll notice that while I've been looking at the desktop ones, there are uh, screen stencils for iPhone and iPad and they're, each one is going to have two because there's portrait mode and landscape mode. Now we're going to talk about these when we get to FileMaker Go but just to show you here's the common space uh, for the iPhone and then here's the extra space for landscape and here's the extra space for portrait. And when we get to FileMaker Go I'll talk about some, some, uh, some ways to develop properly and using auto sizing to make it work. You do have the ability to have a custom size so that if you're developing something very unique or you just want to set your own boundaries, you can hit custom size and do 700 by 600. Click OK and then you get that new orange line that shows you the new dimensions. Uh, you are limited to one custom size at a time, um, but other than that it acts just like the rest of the screen stencils. So let's go ahead and turn those off and now let's talk about the explicit uh, layout width. Now in FileMaker prior, we were always dealing with having to put an object on the right hand side in order to get the layout to resize properly. Um, in this case, you'll notice that we get, the, uh, we get our cursor changes so that we can actually modify the size of the width. So when I go into browse mode and specifically on the Mac, when I click on the green button to adjust the window to its size, it's going dependent on that line. Now what, why this is important is because it kind of changes the way that we look at a layout. For example, let's say that I had a category field in here. So let me add that here. And then I'm designing my layout and I decide to move it out of the way just temporarily or I say I, I actually don't think I need the category field. So I move it outside of the, the explicit width. Well when I go into browse mode, just as expected, I don't see that field. However, if my user clicks on table view, the category field does show up. So you can tell that this is a, an issue when it comes to data integrity. Uh, it, it sh you should be very careful not depending on the right side as something that your users can't get to. Additionally, a script can see that field there. Now where you have to be really careful is what if the field is just barely on top of that line? Well in browse mode I have auto sizing on so that field ends up on the layout. If I resize the layout that object is still there even though it's hard to see what it is. And what's a little more dangerous is that the tab order, uh, someone taps with the tab order, they're actually going to run into that field. And it, obviously it's hard to tell what just happened. The user may think that they're, you know, they, they, it's, it's confusing is what it is. So there is some caution that needs to be taken when adding things uh, to the right side. Quite frankly, I think it's, it's a safe practice to never put any fields on the right hand side, just in case table view, in case the field's barely on the edge, it's just a safer way to take it. However, what this section is really good for is for notes. So whenever we're working on a layout, there might be action items or things that you're working on and you want to remind yourself, remove this or change that or whatever it may be. Um, and before we might use conditional formatting to do that, we'd use pen and paper. But now that we have this explicit area, I can easily add a note. So I'm just going to make a new note here, put in today's date, and say be awesome. 
So what, what's cool about this is that if I have another developer working on this solution with me, I can add notes, and if we make it our standard practice, we can use this section to add notes for each other so that when they get to this layout and jump into layout mode, they can see that text box. And again, in browse mode, they won't be able to see that uh, those that text or those objects on there. Now, one thing I do want to point out is you'll notice that when I go into browse mode, my edge expands over to the right hand side just as my lower edge expands down. Well, the only reason that's happening is because there's anchoring going on. I'm going to choose everything on this layout and I'm going to remove any auto sizing. And when I go into browse mode, you'll notice that we get our explicit line as expected. Well, this might be necessary in some cases, but the reality is that something like on FMGO or even on screen, you often want that line to move to the to however big the window is. When we got that feature, we were all very excited about it, and I think we still need to take advantage of it. So in this specific case, I can go ahead and make the notes field expand, and I can choose the portal as well as the header of the portal and have those expand as well. And on top of that, I want the portal to move down or actually get more rows if there's room for it. So by adding those anchors or the, adding that auto sizing, my layout now adjusts as I expect it to and I don't get that white space or gray space over on the right hand side. I think this is actually really important when it comes to FileMaker Go. Uh, you want to be careful because if you don't have something stretching or auto sizing then you're going to get that gray area and it can it can look very very awkward um, when the device is being rotated. So imagine that this was the iPad and then you had this gray area when you were in uh, in landscape mode. It can definitely be a little um, a little awkward and, and not as a, not such a clean interface. So I think that covers all for this video. So we talked about st uh, stencils and being able to create your own as well as the explicit layout width and how important anchoring is going to be as well as being careful uh, what you put on the right hand side. Thanks for watching and see you on the next video.